thanks ladies and gentlemen for joining us in this edition of the prime time newscast on Equinox television live from my headquarters in cameroon's economic capital Dwala, the wearing of face mask against the coronavirus becomes obligatory in the southwest region of the republic of cameroon this is a decision of the southwest governor Benau kalia bilaya as cameroonian authorities step up the fight against coronavirus taking uh, other stringent or um, uh, stringent measures to curb or limit the spread of the coronavirus in the Republic of Cameroon. Stay with us. Thanks, dear viewers, for joining us on this edition of the news on Equinox Television. We begin with news streaming into our studios from the far north region of the Republic of Cameroon, where at least seven persons are reported to have been killed by militants of the Nigerian terrorist sector Boko Haram in their last attack over the weekend in the locality of Amchidi. At least 15 persons were equally wounded in that attack by militants of the Nigerian uh, terrorist sect in Amchidi, far north region of the Republic of Cameroon. Now in news concerning the coronavirus pandemic, the figures of uh, confirmed cases and deaths continue rising in the Republic of Cameroon. Close to 700 confirmed cases are now uh, reported and at least nine persons have died of the COVID-19 in Cameroon and the government of the Republic of Cameroon is stepping up its fight against COVID-19 taking stringent uh, major to curb the spread of the virus across the Republic of Cameroon. But some uh, observers of the civil society and political leaders are saying that more stringent measures have to be uh, taken, but some considerations must be uh, taken into, some issues must be taken into consideration in some actions that the government will take. And we spoke to a U.S.-based medical expert and Smanji can give a compiled her views in this report. Smart Jikan Gebre with the report on the views of a Cameroonian U.S. based medical expert on the fight against COVID-19 and among other things she discourages self-medication and the use of chloroquine that could cause other health complications in the system of the users according to the Cameroonian United States based medical experts and she talks about other issues concerning the management of COVID-19 in Cameroon compared to what is being done in the United States of America. The United States of America as well as Cameroon are in the battlefront both are faced with the struggle to conquer COVID-19 that has caused enormous trouble to its population. A Cameroonian U.S.-based doctor says America could in the days ahead witness a drop in the numbers of patients because of the confinement policy implemented. But she says that can be possible in Cameroon. The staying at home order that we have in the USA in Western countries cannot really be implemented in African countries because we just don't have the same structure, the same reality. You cannot ask people to stay at home under a temperature of 40 degrees with no water and no electricity. According to her, the best solution for Cameroonians to stop the spread of the disease is through the use of face masks. What we can actually do is to give some mask to all Cameroonians. This is the only way we can contain the spreading. This number is going to increase and it's going to increase dramatically if we don't find another way to prevent the transmission. And so far, just having a mask can decrease your risk to spread the disease, but only to be infected. So I'm going to really encourage Cameroonians to wear a mask. She also warns a lot about the use of chloroquine by Cameroonians. Chloroquine will never protect you or prevent you from being infected by the disease. No, you are going to just cause another problem. 
you don't know how it will act in your liver you don't know if the chloroquine that you bought outside on the street is the really chloroquine and what is the toxicity so i really encourage you to stop doing the auto medication the cameroonian u.s based doctor has this advice for the government in relation to the circulation of chloroquine. Government in Cameroon should really find a way just to forbid or restrict the availability of chloroquine just to the hospital, especially if chloroquine is not used anymore to treat malaria. So I don't see the why we should have them in pharmacy store. Because even if we say that from now, if anyone needs to have a chloroquine, hey, that person needs to have a prescription. People might find a way to come with fake prescription and still buy the chloroquine. So we want to avoid that. So I really think that it should be so solely restricted to hospital cameroon at the time of this report is counting 658 patients with covid 19 virus and on the issue of total confinement total or partial confinement which is on the table of the cameroon government uh, medical uh, experts dr d for peter Louis, secretary general of the cameroon medical uh, council says that it's going to be difficult to implement total confinement in cameroon because of some uh, socio uh, cultural hindrance that will not uh, be uh, favorable for the implementation of total confinement in cameroon he uh, however proposes other solutions Solutions that the Cameroon government can implement to stop the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Take a listen. You know, our people in Cameroon, with the indiscipline that we have, with the financial difficulties that we have, can we be able to be self-confined? Can we be able to stay at our homes without even moving out? That is a big difficulty. Self-confinement, we think it's, it's uh, a very big problem and will not be, be recommended for in Cameroon. The uh, South Korea and uh, German uh, model in which uh, we do identification of suspected cases, they do mass testing of those who are suspected and they actually make sure that they close down all the social places and uh, the make sure that those who are vulnerable and who are who are sick are actually admitted into into hospitals and quarantine those who are actually suspected cases are actually quarantined for example in south korea they have dual localization it means that they could be able to tell a, where a, a suspected case is if at all you leave the area they can be able to tell you whether you have left that area or not but uh, if you realize this method was very very successful in south korea and in germany and so that is one of uh, the recommendations that uh, we may be able to have in Cameroon. and then the most famous one uh, the maxell model from uh, uh, Professor uh, Didier Dino. Rao, which takes into consideration the South Korea and the German uh, model and adds in massive screening of the population, massive screening of the population and treatment of all possible positive cases. It has been shown that hydrochloroquine and azithromycin have significant uh, uh, effects on the coronavirus and uh, he carried out a study and out of all his patients that he took care of only one patient died Dr. Ndifo Peter Louis, Secretary General of the Cameroon Medical Council, also thinks that government should invest more in tracking all suspected COVID-19 cases or all persons who are suspected to have come in contact with uh, confirmed cases of coronavirus and that government should also invest more in equipping hospitals and medical centers or health centers across the country for a proper management of possible cases of COVID-19. Listen to him. One of the basic things that Cameroon has not done is that we've not followed up on all the lost quarantine cases that came from the flights on March 17th. So, what we should be able to do, we should be able to put our intelligence officers, the police, the armies, to be able to track 
all of those passengers that arrived with this flight because we know that they are the origin of this infection in Cameroon. If you track these passengers and you get their contacts and their relatives, their relatives their persons everywhere that they have everybody that they have contacted, then we do we, we, we actually do testing for all of them and uh, we quarantine them. It's an obligation. It's, a matter, it's not a matter of option because it's a matter of national danger. And uh, the people should be well educated that this is a, something to be able to, to protect the uh, society. I think if we track those people who actually were the initial uh, vectors of uh, the, the, the infection in Cameroon and get their contacts and do improved testing. Apart from that, we look at the health infrastructure. We talked about it before. How prepared are we? Health facilities have difficulties to be able to protect health personnel. Health facilities have a significant difficulty to be able to take care of corona patients. And the wearing of face mask as part of the measures to fight against COVID-19 has become obligatory in the southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. The southwest governor, Benau Kalia Bilai, has decided that all persons visiting public institutions must put on a face mask or will not be granted access. The southwest regional administrative officials are stepping up the fight against COVID-19 as our correspondent Derek Jato reports. Please open, one meter. Please open, open. The awareness is everywhere and the affected are among us and unknown. Coronavirus is real. It is no longer something to tell. The, uh, most of the families have been victims or are to be victims. Let us stop it through our behavior, through the collaboration to, for implementing the testing measures. Seen more now on the field than in meetings, Governor Bernardo Kalia Bilai is heading to the Mongo Bridge, where the southwest region separates with the littoral. Preventive measures must be seen in practice here before any person gets into his region, the southwest region. And among other things, the southwest governor stress on the use of face masks. And that should start here at this entry point. The Minister of Public Health has recommended to the population to wear a mask when they are going out. That's why we went to the bridge. We set up a sensitization control chip to sensitize the population, particularly the passengers. They should wear the mask and they should pass through the, the screen to verify their temperatures. We want to plead with all the passengers and all the population to collaborate. It is not to order them or to harass them, just to and it is an obligation for those in public services or those who are to visit such establishments. We have also decided that as from Monday, those who will go to the public services should wear a mask. The Southwest region is yet to fully practice the preventive point of social distancing as markets, for instance, are still very congested. But Chief Mayor Mososo Peter Ekomedi Sikon, the mayor of the Tiku Council, told the Southwest Governor that it is a continuous battle and his municipality is not relenting. Tiku municipality has started doing that already. Uh, now with the force of this regional campaign, like I said, we have to only intensify the rules. Not gathering people more than 50 in a place. We talk about you preserving yourself for not attending occasions that look crowded. 
it is for our own benefit, for our own betterment. It is the wish of the Southwest people to see the number of confirmed cases that are steadily rising to start falling. The Douala City Mayor has taken a similar measure. Roger Mbassa Dini has decided that the wearing of face masks to fight against COVID-19 will be obligatory in the days ahead in the town of Douala. And uh, one of the groups of persons described as most vulnerable as far as the COVID-19 pandemic is concerned is uh, made up of internal displaced persons, persons who have been kicked out of their homes by violence in Anglophone Cameroon and they are now seeking refuge in other parts of Francophone uh, Cameroon in very difficult and deplorable conditions which further exposes uh, them to the risk of contracting COVID-19 and some of them were visited over the weekend by officials of the Popular Action Party. Details with Imakuli Fogui. The runaway from gun battles, killings, destruction of properties and other atrocities committed in the northwest and southwest regions to seek refuge in other regions of the country. And today, another war stirs them right on the face. They are internally displaced persons. Amidst the green coronavirus pandemic, the difficult conditions put them more at risk of being infected by the virus. And this is why persons displaced by the Anglophone crisis have been described by members of the Popular Action Party as the most vulnerable. You realize that internally displaced are the most psychologically touched. You know, they just left a zone where there was already an existing crisis. They ran from that crisis, which has to do what called the Anglophone crisis or called the Anglophone war. They ran from there for, for safety. And most of them are very vulnerable. Um, they live in, majority of them live in houses. Officials of the Popular Action Party visited some of these internally displaced persons in the Douala 5 subdivision. During their visit, they offered these IDPs hand sanitizers, face masks and financial assistance. So we, it's a way to like empower them financially, to sensitize them and uh, to tell them the, 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 the dangers surrounding this pandemic because to some of them they might some of them always have they say the notion that what we already saw in where we left is even worse than what we are seeing here so we give a damn to <laughs> so it is uh, in that light that we deem in the that we need to meet with the idps i'm called bison rosemary an idp here in bonaberry Douala. just wish to thank the team that has come to really sensitize us about what is going on in our country now, the coronavirus. So I just wish to thank them for the hand sterilizer and the face marks that they have given to us. Because really now life is not really easy. So with this, we were looking for money to buy this. But now that they have given to us, it will help us what we are having to manage with our family, with our dear ones. The measure, according to the officials, the party has meant to mitigate the impact of the fight against the deadly coronavirus. Some of the hundreds of thousands of Anglophone Cameroonians forced out of their homes by the Anglophone crisis in Bonaberry in the Douala 4 subdivision receiving a health talk from members of the Popular Action Party and also material and financial aid to help them fight against COVID-19 to help them uh, keep themselves safe from the coronavirus and a strike action that was initially planned for today by transporters in the redivision uh, did not hold. The strike action has been postponed to a date yet to be announced if the problems presented by the transporters 
are not solved by the administrative and municipal authorities. The trade unionists of the transporters of transporters in the Wuri division decided to suspend that strike action after a late night meeting with the Wuri prefect Mbutu Benjamin and other administrative and top forces of law and order in the littoral region of the country yesterday and they agreed to suspend the strike action while the administrative authorities find solutions to the applies notably with regards to the impact the adverse impact of the COVID-19 fight uh, measures taken by the Ministry of Transport on the uh, activities they are finding it difficult to uh, survive as a result of the restrictions imposed by the Ministry of transport within the framework of the fight against COVID-19. Take a listen to the senior divisional officer of the Uri Division, Mbutu Benjamin. The strike has been suspended because uh, which the, the transported we have to, to continue the discussion. Concerning reports Monday, as it records 1,655 cases of the coronavirus. Arujuya comes second with 1,320 cases, to be followed third by Egypt with 1,173 cases. Another North African country, Morocco, ranks fourth with 1,113 cases. Cameroon comes fifth with 658 confirmed cases. Tunisia 574, Burkina Faso 345, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana, Niger, Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Guinea and Rwanda have cases between 261 and 101. African nations whose cases are below 100 include Togo, Uganda, Mali, Congo, Ethiopia, Zambia, Gabon, Tanzania, Libya, Guinea-Bissau, Equatorial Guinea, Namibia, Angola, Liberia, and Mozambique. Below 10 cases are Zimbabwe, Chad, Central African Republic, Somalia, Botswana, Mauritania, Sierra Leone, Gambia, Malawi, Burundi, and South Sudan. Only the dead toll, Algeria ranks first with 152, second by Egypt with 78, Morocco 71. The other nations record dead cases between 23 and 1. Nations like Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Equatorial Guinea, Chad, Central Africa Republic, Somalia, Namibia, Uganda, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Malawi, Burundi, and South Sudan have zero death. Meantime, Egypt has 247 recovery cases, far more than others. South Africa, 95, Senegal, 92, Algeria, 90, Morocco, 76, with the other countries having below 35. Uganda, Chad, Central Africa Republic, Sierra Leone, Malawi, Burundi, and South Sudan have zero recovery. New cases keep emerging rapidly and the death rates slowly rising in the African continent. Talking point is up next. Our guest today is Dr. Njubi C. Serge, health policy expert working with the Bopi Baptist Hospital here in Douala as a medical doctor. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. You are an expert in health policy. What is That's your right. take on right. the rising figures, the rising COVID-19 figures? Today we are talking about uh, close to uh, 700 confirmed cases as of now. The figures may increase that by the end of the day when the Minister of Public Health uh, gives the updates uh, during his daily uh, briefing on coronavirus. As of now, we are talking about over five, 700 confirmed cases and nine deaths. What's your take on the rising figures? Okay, I will start by saying that uh, the figures are alarming and uh, if you compare the figures we have in Cameroon to other uh, countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, you understand that uh, 
we need to strengthen or to be proactive about the strategies put in place in fighting this uh, uh, infection, or also known as COVID-19. Uh, from my own point of view, I think that uh, they, prob they, are they somehow, in the measure put in place, a problem along the traceability of contact and the isolation of those contacts. We do remember that a few weeks ago, there were some passengers that just returned from highly infected countries, France, Italy, and somehow they evade surveillance, or should I say confinement. By so doing, they went back to their communities and kept infecting people one after the other. I think that also can somehow explain why today Cameroon is rated the second highest country in sub-Saharan Africa affected by this COVID-19. Another point also is the isolation. What do we do when we find out or when we test somebody to be positive? Do we have in place some structure to properly isolate these people from those who are not infected? That reminds me of some country like Nigeria. The book stadium prepare ground for isolation, security, put in place respirators, beds, all the logistics needed to isolate those people so that there will not be transmission of infection from one individual to the other. And that's why the Cameroon government is uh, uh, acquiring more infrastructures for the uh, isolation of persons with COVID-19 and also for the quarantine, uh, the quarantine of uh, suspected cases. The military stadium in Yaoundé uh, and other structures have been uh, gradually put in place to ensure that the confirmed cases are well uh, isolated, uh, properly uh, isolated. But that seems not to be uh, enough. Well. Uh First of all, I will applaud that measure, but I think uh, somehow it's coming out a little bit late. We do not have to wait until we have 650 people infected with the virus before we put such measure in place. We all know that uh, COVID-19 started four months ago in China. That gave us a lot of time to prepare and put in place mechanism to handle this. As it is now, we hope that uh, implementation of those measures will be effective on ground because as it is now, that's the only way to combat this infection. Dr. Ndifo Peter Louis, Secretary General of the Cameroon Medical Council, who was speaking to me in the inside uh, yesterday, was uh, highlighting the utmost necessity to, uh, for government to invest more in tracking all suspected cases and all persons who are suspected to have come in contact with persons or confirmed cases but that seemed to be a quite a difficult exercise the minister and other authorities have been calling on the people who came through some of the flights uh, uh, coming from uh, infected countries to come and present themselves to uh, present themselves to health authorities but many of them are not showing up some who have come in contact with uh, confirmed cases are not showing up some go to the hospital and they tell lies and they infect even the health workers there how to go about this tracking down all those people the tracking down of infected people is very important in the fight against COVID-19. As a country, the government has all the means, all the measures to effectively track this individual wherever they are. We have security apparatus, police, gendarmerie, okay, to go wherever these people are and bring them so that we can properly isolate them and stop the transmission of this disease. And Dr. Ndifo said that it's no longer an issue of choice. It's no longer an issue of asking you to come or not to come. It should be obligatory because we're now talking of uh, a danger that is not hitting some individuals, but the entire nation as a whole. Those just some few regions have been affected, about four regions uh, up to now that have uh, recorded confirmed cases of the COVID-19. Yes, I share in that line of thought. 
as I was saying, why don't government just publish out the list of all those passengers? Because these people come from a family. They have neighbors. They know people around. If the list is out, people around are going to ask questions. And we also need to, um, we need to organize some form of mass campaign to educate people more about this COVID-19. Because for us to have almost 700 people infected with the virus, that shows that a lot of work needs to be doing, need, need to be done on ground. And yes. that is all about information and communication. We should teach people about the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 so that if, for instance, they experience a little fever, <coughs> headache, or and cough, they should be not a number, numbers from different centers where they can call. From there, they'll be pro pro properly oriented or what next to do. Now, some medical experts, like you explained, that uh, one uh, confirmed case has the potential, or even a suspected case has the potential of infecting at least 10 other persons. And when uh, the, the figures are multiplied, uh, with regards to the number of confirmed cases now, the figures may be much higher than what we have now, the official figures that we have now. I, is that true? Yes. It is very true. Let's go back. Let's, let's go back. Three, four weeks ago, we had few cases. Maybe five, maybe two. But today we're talking about 700. That should tell you that if nothing is, do is done, in the next coming two or three weeks, we are going to be talking about thousands of cases. Maybe 10,000. So I think it's time for government to be firm, to come out strong with strong measures in order to prevent the spread of this COVID-19. Now, Cameroon is in stage two of the uh, infection, stage two of the pandemic. Uh, the, you, in medical terms, uh, they're talking about community infection, community transmission, transmission among members of the community. What exactly uh, are we referring to? Well, when, when it comes to transmission of an infection or illness, there are four stages. Stage one is when somebody is infected with the virus, has a travel history. Stage two is what we call local transmission. Okay? It's when the person that has a travel history and who also is infected comes in contact with family members or people around him, the loved ones, the neighbors. We also have, we, then we, are, we have stage three, which is what is now known as uh, community transmission. Okay? This has to do with a member of a community transmitting the infection to another member. And at this level, the source of the virus is difficult to trace or is almost unknown. And to me, we have gotten to this stage. This is the time for government to take proactive measures, to come out strong. We are not negotiating anymore because this matter is a matter of public interest, general public interest. We have to protect the majority of Cameroonians. Okay? Maybe what I will propose as a solution is for government to come out with what we call total confinement. Total confinement. But if, before we talk about total confinement, we must understand our economic reality, our context, local context. Our 80% of Cameroonians live on daily bread. We can't just ask everybody to be confined totally. Government needs to come out with some social relief program. Example, government can offer to pay the electricity bill of Cameroonian, light the water bill, and why not bring it down maybe the price of fuel from 680 francs to 450. There are some measures government can put in place to help people. By so doing, it will be easier for people to accept 
total confinement. Because you don't expect a man that is married and maybe have seven children, okay, and who is a breadwinner of that family and live on daily bread to be totally confined. So we, em don't, we implore, we invite government to look at ways, okay, to reduce the economic impact of this uh, infection on citizens so that everybody will now be able to accept the idea of total confinement. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres talked about the war economy, the importance for governments to support economies, to support private individuals, to support businesses, to support vulnerable groups of persons. But uh, this is uh, proving uh, a little difficult because of financial constraints. The authorities will talk about financial uh, constraints, uh, considering the fact that according to what uh, um, Dr. Somgui said uh, to me in an edition of The Insight, it is quite expensive to take charge to uh, handle cases of uh, COVID-19. How expensive is it? Well, actually, it is actually very expensive, especially for those who have come down with the stage three of the disease. That means those who have come down with severe respiratory distress, because these people need, for instance, to be admitted into a hospital and require respirator. And respirators are not available in all the hospitals across the country. Um, in, a, in a referral hospital like the Limbe uh, Hospital, respirators are not there according to the director of that hospital, Dr. King Nje. And there's a medical doctor who died here in the economic capital of the country, here in Douala, the general hospital, because there was no respirator in the hospitals around. Well, because there were no respirators available. From our knowledge, uh, in a city of five million like Douala, we have about 14 respirators for five million individuals. Today, we have been told we have 650 confirmed cases of COVID-19. COVID Let's imagine a scenario whereby 30 of them come down with severe illness in Douala. What are we going to do? I think it's not, it's not yet late. There's still time for government, as I said before, to be proactive, put in strong measures, providing respirators, face masks for the health workers, and whatever it takes to fight this infection. All right. The Minister of Public Health last week announced that the government was uh, working to acquire more equipment for the hospitals, for the health workers, in order to step up the fight against the COVID-19. Now, let's remind our viewers of some of the basic preventive measures, uh, notably the sanitation rules of the World Health Organization to fight against uh, the COVID-19. Um, the first one is every Cameroonian should practice hand hygiene. They should regularly wash their hands with clean water and soap regularly. Or for those who do not have the privilege to always have water around themselves, they can use what we call alcohol-based hand rub. Time to time apply it and the hand sanitizer. Uh, hand sanitizer. Okay, it's also known as hand sanitizer. Alcohol-based hand rope. Concerning water, the, there's a precision on running water. Why must the water be running? Water must be running so that as you are washing your hand, in case you have come in contact with the virus, with the running water, with the soap, as you are washing your hand and water is flowing, there is chances for the virus with the soap to slip off and fall out. If you wash inside a container with water, of course, you, you can still get your hands contaminated. As you're washing off, the virus falls inside the water and you are still washing. So the water should be running? It should be running. Now, the other preventive measures, social distancing. Yes, every, everybody should observe at least one meter distance from each other. It's important in reducing the transmission of COVID-19. Because it has been found that if somebody sneezes or coughs, cough, okay, the droplet usually do not go further than a meter. 
So that's the reason why we say we should observe one meter distancing. Right. Uh, Other measures is if eventually you have cough or you are sneezing, make sure you cough into your elbow. Okay? Right. You don't cough into the air. You cough in your elbow. That's one. And the wearing then, of face mask has become obligatory in the southwest region. Also, make sure you don't touch your face with your hands so that you don't contaminate yourself through the mouth, the nose, or the eyes. Hmm. Then, now we are talking about the wearing of face masks which have become public. I think uh, recent forges have also, has, have also shown that there are some elements of airborne transmission to this COVID-19. That's the reason why, whereby most people are now coming out to recommend that everybody should wear a face mask to prevent transmission. Then, the place of WHO has not changed as for now. Face masks should be allowed for those who are frontliners in the fight against COVID-19. These people are those who are already infected, those taking care of the infected people, and the health workers. However, government and where to do Cameroonians can also encourage local manufacturing of masks. Let it be cloth masks so that at least people can cover their face. By so doing, we are going to go a long way in reducing the transmission rate of COVID-19 in Cameroon. And of course, there are other measures that should be respected by all in order to limit the spread of COVID-19 in the Republic of Cameroon. And I want to remind that the President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul B. A. called on all Cameroonians and all other persons living on the Cameroon territory to be more responsible and disciplined at this very crucial moment in order to uh, come together like the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manauda Malachi requested United to fight against this common enemy, the COVID-19. That's it for this edition of the news. Dr. Njubisi Sesh, health policy expert working with the Mopi Baptist Hospital as medical doctor. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for staying with us. Goodbye.